self-education and life-changing narrated non-fiction books at the library. There will always be forces all around the world hoping to keep education broken or hoping to destroy it entirely just to make people simple and scared. And pointing that out will always sound like a conspiracy theory that will be all too easily taken down by even the weakest of liars. And anyway, no one will think ineffective education will happen to them until it is too late. Liars will always infiltrate the most powerful of positions. Outcompeting an honest person is likely to be completely effortless to them. It may even put a smile on their face. Today, there is even an ongoing double whammy where fake teachers replaced education with memorization for the purpose of an easier paycheck and then, to make it even easier, started calling to cancel entire areas of study like mathematics so that they don't even need to put effort into their lives anymore cancelling an entire field that has already been corrupted into memorization under the guise of fairness has got to be one of the greatest insults that humanity has ever received. We have known for ages that schools were not teaching right, and many of us noticed that students are being forced into memorization way early on. Memorization is a particularly terrible tragedy, because on paper, and for that really short amount of time that the state test or final requires, Knowledge does seem indistinguishable from memorized, unintegrated trash. That's what the children are receiving in school. An integrated noise that looks really good on tests after the students are pushed into cramming. And the liars will always keep coming. The stupid monsters can smell that education simply prevents war. And war, along with all its tragedies and chaos, is their only way to infinitely large fortunes. Those who can't build or lead a wise economy can only jolt the trashy one with constant threat, endless conflict, and infinitely prolonged war. Now, self-education, by listening to wise books held in high esteem by all the world's intellectuals and wise beings, on a tiny, portable, almost undetectable MP3 player that may cost less than a dollar, and especially when taking to great adventures that clear room for hearing all the great beings speak, for inheriting all the wisdom that they present, and sleeping under the sky, and being connected with nature, will actually move education from failing institutions that probably never worked into our hearts, where books can't be banned, where they can't be stolen or burned, where they can be only understood. Schools are extremely important when they are effective. And it is extremely foolish to expect children to learn from ineffective education. 
early on, all the decisions the children make are made based on what they learn. And schools aren't even teaching them for real. They are just teaching what is easy to memorize and test, what looks good on state tests that their funding and paycheck depends on. It is also a grave mistake and should be an unforgivable insult to send the children, which are as brilliant and as unique as the stars, into standardized educational processing environments where little monsters hone their skills by bullying and the students are threatened by things like being held back an entire year or by cruel and persistent ridicule. No child should ever say, I forgive you for having sent me into ineffective education where I was pressured into lying, violence, alcohol, drugs, and pretending to learn. Real knowledge is integrated knowledge. It is knowledge that is immediately functional outside of the classroom. Students must not wait for things to come together, as that is a fool's errand, and all the lying teachers will depend on that. The things will never come together if you make them wait. Real education is not about forcing the understanding of a concept like sine, cosine, or the electronic circuit or some internet protocol. It is about helping students program animation that will visualize all the functions, letting them reinvent trigonometry from scratch, comprehend it through and through. It is about placing a coin cell, a magnet, and an LED in the palm of their hand and inviting them to understand not just the electronic circuit, but the universe. It is about installing a blank cross-browser web extension into their browsers and saying, this is where we will make internet truly yours. And it's about showing them new things that they were tricked away from, like music composition, which we are all capable of, or painting with the aid of projectors or camera obscura, a tradition. And above all, it is about addressing the world's greatest failure, as we can't hope to fix education without fixing poverty at the same time, and helping schools become more like startup accelerators, where multiple co-founders can put small companies together, would go a long way. Poverty greatly reduces the likelihood that a student will be able to find serenity. And the profound, real education that truly changes lives is unlikely to take root without serenity. We can't afford to gamble with education that we have not received effective education when we went to school should be reason enough to help your children build a small laboratory and take them to as many stress-free, serenity-inducing outdoor adventures as they need. Unlike the liars, I cannot tell you which books you must get first. But know that these are non-fiction books written by a class of great beings termed 
a science popularizers. They are our best and the most beautiful teachers. Maybe they are our only teachers. I urge you to help your children grow up around great beings. We have failed to build effective educational institutions. We have sent them into a perversion of education where temporary memorization is thought to be just as good as comprehension. They will soon be tasked with helping their students learn. Give them a fighting chance. Help them. Help them grow up around great beings. Help them find their way towards narrated, beautiful non-fiction that will have them inherit countless lifetimes of wisdom and have them begin their life where the great beings left off.